Good morning. My role is to muse and amaze before Bill comes here. Uh, but uh, in all seriousness, uh, Bill is uh, going to take uh, probably about three or four minutes, and uh, he is now with some students. And I think uh, rightfully so, as Grand Valley State University's focus is on, on our students and, of course, uh, with other guests here in the audience. So uh, he said uh, he wanted to go over and, and say hello to them. We have his uh, uh, remarks uh, shipped over to the uh, Anna room for our students, but uh, to start uh, with him there, I think is the right way to, to start this morning. But uh, I'm Tom Haas, I'm President of Grand Valley State University, and here to welcome you uh, to, uh, to this uh, Seedman uh, breakfast and, and lecture series. I am uh, absolutely thrilled to uh, note the quality of our programming through my now two plus years here at Grand Valley State University. Um, I would want to re recognize two people in the audience uh, uh, to start, and I'm going to turn over to uh, one of my colleagues. But uh, uh, Ambassador Peter Secchi is here. Please recognize him. Ambassador. Thank you. Uh, he's here with his bride, Joan, and I appreciate both of you coming here and the support that you give to Grand Valley State University. And uh, one of my uh, uh, heroes uh, through these last two and a half years, Ralph Hallenstein. Thank you for being here, sir. I'm just going to take a, uh, a minute uh, to give you a, a brief update on the university. Our numbers continue to be uh, strong. We've up 1.8% uh, overall. Our freshman class uh, is the largest we've ever had, over 3,900. And the profile of those students continue uh, to uh, also appreciate uh, as well with uh, uh, wonderful students that are joining uh, Grand Valley State University. But the real significant uh, uh, difference that I've seen over the last couple of years is the draw of students to Grand Valley State University, uh, maintaining our base here in West Michigan, but drawing throughout all of Michigan now. And in fact, uh, if you look at our freshman class, the uh, uh, by county by county, after Kent County, Oakland County is the next largest in terms of draw. So we are really expanding uh, that base, so to speak, and knowing that Grand Valley State University is serving the entire state. Uh, we have students from every county now here at Grand Valley State University. So we continue to be strong at the undergraduate level and at the graduate level as well. We're serving uh, this region, serving the state with graduates who are staying here in Michigan. One of the things that I uh, like to uh, pound my chest on, and I'll probably do it a little bit later uh, tonight as well when I go over to Lansing, is that 98% of our students are, who graduate are working or going to grad school. Those that are working, 88% are working here in Michigan, and these are jobs in business and high-tech jobs and the like. These are students that are staying right here in West Michigan and in Michigan. In fact, 80% are working right here in Michigan. And I think our reputation is now going nationally. We are recognized as one of the best institutions in the U.S. News and World Report listing of uh, best colleges and universities in the Midwest. But a particular notation uh, was uh, noted uh, right before I gave an opening address in August. Matt McLogan's here, and he didn't even tell me about this. Matt. <clears throat> But I'm reading the uh, Detroit paper, and in there it says we were tied for first as uh, in a new category called up-and-coming institutions. Up-and-coming. That's a pretty nice uh, designation, isn't it, for Grand Valley State University, as we are still up-and-coming, and we are not even 50 years old as yet. So a very, very good uh, uh, recognition of the type of innovative programs that we offer here at Grand Valley State University. And the final statement I'd like to make is that for 13 years in a row, we're America, one of America's 100 best buys for quality and affordability and access. So I think things are on a, on a good uh, uh, platform, stability-wise, and still uh, having that uh, nature of a future that's so positive for Grand Valley State University as we support Michigan and the rest of this nation with our graduates. And with that, again, welcome uh, here, and I'm going to introduce uh, my good friend, uh, Glees Whitney, please come on up. Thank you for being here.
Thank you, President Haas, and thank you all for coming to this event. Uh, this is the first time that we've been able, in a Seedman breakfast, to actually partner with the Seedman College of Business, and we're just delighted and honored to do so. Thank you for showing up this morning, being here for some remarks. Now, my job is to be a little bit of a filler before uh, Bill Seedman and James Williams come in, so I'm going to be looking often at this door over here, and when they come in, then I'm going to sit down very quickly. But I wanted to, uh, I'm often asked, uh, is there anything unique or different about this election? Uh, and what is it in particular about this election that makes it compelling? You know, um, on November 4th, 2008, it'll be the 55th time that Americans are going to be able to exercise their constitutional right, their duty to select the President of the United States. And there are several things, I think, that make this election particularly interesting. One of them, of course, is obvious. It's the fact that you have an African-American or a woman or a septuagenarian who definitely will be in the White House uh, for the first time in U.S. history. Now, this is a huge social leap for this country. A second factor that makes this election somewhat different and interesting is that young people are tuned in more than ever before. The secretaries of state, if you go out to the secretaries of state across the United States, they're saying that there are more young people who are registering to vote than ever before. All indications are, from pollsters, that about 75% of those young people will be voting for one candidate. I think you know who that is, Barack Obama. A third factor that's kind of interesting is that um, this is the first election since 1952 it, that is entirely open. You don't have an incumbent. You don't have a vice president running. And it's the first election since 1976 when either a Bush or a Dole is not running. Think about that. A fourth thing that makes this election interesting, this is the first time, this is the first time since um, that, that we're going to have two senators who are the finalists. And it's only the third time that we'll have a senator in the White House. Warren Harding and John F. Kennedy went straight from the Senate to the White House. Well, I think I can uh, stop chattering now because I see two distinguished gentlemen who've just come into the, the room, uh, Bill Seidman and James Williams, and I'm going to be turning over the uh, podium now to Dean Williams. Thank you very much. Thank you very much and good morning. And thank all of you for being out this morning. You know, it's interesting because one of my colleagues said earlier, what a wonderful crowd. You know, why are all these folks here? And then he said, well, you know, it's the times, but more than that, it's because our speaker is probably one of the only persons in the nation right now that we trust. <laughs> So I'd like to invite to the podium the chief commentator for CNBC, noted author, President Ford's FDIC chairman, statesman, and native son, Bill Seaton.